Welcome back. Um, I believe last time we reviewed two games out of nine. And we'll see how many we can get through right now. Um, but yeah, these games were fantastic. Um, as crushing as they were to play, there are so many lessons to be learned from them. So let's continue our study and see what we can learn today. Um, starting with game three here. All right, so to analyze games, and this w website is called woogles.io. I have the game zoomed in so you can't exactly see the site banner right there. Uh, you'll have to trust me that this is woogles. Um, so we examine a game and go back to the first position. Um, so every odd numbered game into my every uh, odd number game my opponent uh, would play first or at least be able to so this time they opened with Cobb and yeah I think if I knew that all of my threes Cobb would be the most logical start here you want to leave good letters to help you um, bingo later and Cobb burns off your highest scoring letters note that this time I'm ordering letters by frequency. So of course he's going to burn off the highest uh, scoring letters first. All right, and then this is what I had. Um, so I'm looking at trying to play uh, Q somewhere. Um, I mean, ideally you'd want to save the Q a little bit, try to find a good place to score it later, but I expect that my opponent is not going to like unwittingly expose any of the triple word or triple letter scores and I don't have a U so I thought the best thing I could do would be play the Q as early as possible here in the hopes of making use of my S and other later letters later <laughs> um what suggestions are made oh here's the analyzer that we learned from last time you can click over here click the little light bulb and the analyzer will suggest uh, high plays plays with high equity this is an interesting observation i have two vowels and five consonants it's the highest equity play oh i'm sorry no okay now oh my god <laughs> Why did I not do that? That's exactly the reason you have the S, is so you could pluralize a word and easily build another word. That's what makes S so strong. Um, what in the world was I thinking? Of course this is strong. Tripling the Q, scoring two words at once. Um, two words at once here is also pretty decent. And this does use two consonants. This makes sense. I think this is what I ended up actually playing. Let's see. No, I played Jin. Okay. So I have some common sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I wanted to hold on to the S so badly. That's an interesting reflection. Um, yeah, and then our opponent manages to immediately close the board due to my failure. And then we have to play on our opponent's turf from here on out because I did not open the board. That was horrible. Um, so even here, mags, and really any kind of word, there's probably a good word here. Um, I mean, flues with an E could be okay. Um, I want something through, I mean, ideal would be building across the top of this, but I don't have letters for that. The second best would be building a parallel play underneath Chin here, but I don't have the letters for that either. Third best would be any perpendicular play, but the only ones I can find involve putting an S after mag, and then this tests my word knowledge. Um, I 
fouls is probably reasonable. Although it opens the board and is risky, I'm already behind, and I don't want to hold on to so many vowels. Um, yeah, now I'm stuck with the F, and I've opened up a double uh, word score lane, which thankfully my opponent doesn't have perfect letters to exploit, so they instead prefer to try to close the board again with another parallel play. Um... And again, this tests my word knowledge. I'm oh, sorry, let's go back one. I didn't think there were... Okay. Well, that's extraordinary. Uh, mana fuels. Um, so this uh, uses the triple word score and has a productive use of the S that otherwise is actually going to be difficult to use in most cases here because all the letters are interlaced. Oh, foul down here. Yeah, kif. Um, kif is a word. Yeah, foul down here makes a lot of sense. Uh, even though the F doesn't exactly land on the triple letter score, like building multiple words at the same time tends to be very valuable. And OES is a word in itself, but also is a suffix OSE that could show up in many cases as is es a suffix um so uh foul makes sense goof okay well i don't know the word kobo but maybe next time we'll know it um boo likewise uh actually this is a really nice leave um i wonder if... <laughs> so we can see the score of this play is 22 the score of this play is 25. The difference in equity is very minuscule here. So, like, these plays are basically interchangeable. It's surprising to me that um, holding on to the L is worse than playing it in this case. For two reasons. Well, one, obviously... Um, if we're trying to provoke our opponent to play a word that opens the board, yes, uh, the you'd want to play foo instead of foul. Um, but the other reason, like, I would have thought this equity is very strong, and I'm surprised that it's less than three points of equity to hold on to the L. Like, LE has very strong synergy, LO has a strong synergy. Uh, ELS is a decent... I guess it's really the O here that breaks it all up. But otherwise, this would have a very strong synergy across all the letters. So, I guess maybe the reason this is not the strongest synergy ever is because we don't have an I. And uh, we have a likelihood... Uh, well, I was going to say we have a likelihood of drawing another vowel, but playing the L is not going to help us there. Um, playing the L will give us another chance to draw a consonant, and a higher scoring consonant at that. I don't understand how this equity is determined. Like, to me, these seem, this seems like a very strong letter combination, minus the O. Um, does the O not combine well with the L? Maybe not. Maybe you need an R for these two to combine well, or an N, or something like that. And they maybe normally don't get along. I'll have to find some code that helps me understand how equity is calculated there. But, um, yeah. So then back to this play. Uh, I could not find anywhere to use the J. I tried. Uh, I tried so hard, but, like, no idea. I'm sorry, a job is playable. But I also want to use the F. Using both the J and the F is quite difficult here. Um, hmm. uh, so we got job... What else do we have other than job? 
I should press myself to look a little further. Um, an O or an E does not play anywhere near our Q. Uh, Kif is playable. Kif mono are still there. So something starting with F-O would be playable. I guess like fo F-O-E. Um, uh, jab is a word, but I don't know if there's a word that starts with J-U-P. J -U -P. Um, yeah, I need help from here. Um, J-O itself is a word, so J-O-B-O -O is playable. I think J-O-E is also playable. I know Joey, a kangaroo, is a valid thing. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, we're just studying our games with Conrad. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce that at the beginning. These were games played last weekend against uh, Grandmaster Conrad Bassett Bouchard. So, uh, he's former or 2014 U.S. champion. So, yeah, this these games were kind of one-sided, but they present a lot of interesting puzzles. Because uh, he's actually quite good at making these confusing positions that look like, honestly, all of them could be in some book somewhere asking you, like, what's the best play? It's really an honor to get to play this game, even if it was a blowout. Um, so... Yeah, there's jab, but I don't think there's J-U-P anything. Uh, boo, no, I'm sorry, R-O is not valid, but fo um, could be done. Um, or Joe could be done. Um, okay, luge is a word, but I don't think cob is playable. And I don't see any way to extend that either. Lugs and cops is an option. Mags and braps is an option. Uh, chins and abs. Um, yeah, there's really not a lot to look at here. Okay, what's the analyzer suggest? Jobs. Okay, so a job occurred to me. Jobs occurred to me. Jobs, I don't know. But evidently it's valid. Um, missing that, Joe is playable. Um, yeah, so Joe would have been good leaving me at this, as I was explaining earlier. Uh, Joe over here. Joe over here. Wow. Um. Hmm. That's, well, I guess there's no particular rhyme or, oh, I'm sorry. This is a triple letter score right there. So I looked at this position, this didn't even occur to me. Unless it's what I played and then it totally occurred to me, but right now it didn't occur to me. It's Joe with an S at the beginning. Um, they strongly encourage the opponent to build across this uh, analyzer does not recommend based on simulations, so uh, playing this without the S would be much riskier, but more interesting in my opinion. Um, actually, this is extremely risky because it allows a double-double. Um, yeah, foe is, uh, was pointed out by the analyzer last turn. Jupe is, in fact, valid. So I never got to... <laughs> After the match, I studied the force. No, before the match, I studied the force. I went through the force list for QXZJ. Um, so I just could not, this did not occur to me in the heat of the moment that playing the J could be useful, at least not here. And while this might score well, it doesn't open the board, and my concern was with opening the board. So I played job over here. Um, vertical Joe was better, as were those other plays. Okay, our opponent has some fun letters. What did they do? Oh, they took the spot that I should have taken. Duh. 
Um, so, and then did I have a D? I did have a D, so I played Zoe, but what else did I play here? Uh, what should I play here? Hmm. Bed, F E D. Bed would have been good. Um, uh, I don't know if I don't recall all my threes, so. Studying this should give me more motivation to go back through re-studying. Or rather, examining this game should give me motivation to study my words again. I've had other distractions this week that have been extremely distracting. Um, and perhaps that's for the best. But, um, yeah, at some point I do need to go back and study threes again. All right. Are there other ideas? No, like... A D up here has to be played. Um, there are not other things that could be played there. If we had more space, we could spell Uzo, but um, that requires more letters, right? So we need to play a D, and it's just a matter of knowing the right words. Oh. Wow. Not an easy word to find. It's findable, just probably not super accessible to me. Yeah, I was so focused on their thinking it's going to be very improbable for a long word to be played, given this combination of letters. I didn't even consider this. Um, yeah, and then you could try blocking plays, but I don't like that. That does nothing to help open the board. Feud, um, with an extra E in it. Feud, the way I'm accustomed to seeing it spelled. Wait, haven't I seen it spelled F? No, this is correct. Um, bowed, feud, fuse. So this is the Collins book, fused, feuds, uh, fouds. Yeah, the other thing is highly distracted by this double letter score tile. Um, feed, feed over here, bed, bud. All right, so that's not just an acronym. Bleh. Acronym? Yeah, that's not just an acronym. That's actually considered a word, bud. Um, yeah, and then there's other stuff. All right. Um, what did I play? I played feed, which is worse than fud, worse than fed, worse than... What were those other words we were looking at just a second ago? Um, uh, view analyzer. Go. Diffuse... Fused, feud, feud here. Yeah, this is the one I would have most preferred to play. Um, because I like the sleeve here. Two vowels, one consonant, that's not bad. This would have been nicer, but I'm not going to find that just yet. Um, and there's food and feud and such. Wait. I'm sorry, that's fowd, not food. My mistake. I just want food. But no, fowd. Interesting. Alright, opponent uh, Conrad played raw. Alright, and to do uh, in response to this, I have options. I have some options, but the fact that I've played poorly up to this point has... Wait, iwi. Iwi's the word to play here. Iwi is the vowel dump that I am looking for. 
unless there was another vowel dump and I'm just not seeing it. Um, I mean, choir occurs to me. Choir opens the board, but um, yeah, there's, where's the harm in it? Um, are there other things I should consider here? Oh, the second row, I was considering, is there some obvious way I could open up the board? I don't have the right letters for soiree. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of at a loss here. Alright, so the analyzer recommends oi. Yeah. I could never remember how to spell this one. I knew it used all the letters other than A, and it starts with an E. Um... We could look up the definition of this word. So we've recently installed a bot, um, which I've taken to calling Wordsmith. Um, so yeah, this um, bot, all right, can be used to anagram and define words and such. Here, oi, uh, wait, oh, interesting. Evo is uh, apparently um, another way to spell this. So this is a variation on Evo because U and V are interchangeable in the spelling. But um, yeah, wow. Maybe I should look at a little bit of Greek text and try to understand why words are spelled in ways that seem confusing to me. I wonder. Greek is a hard language to learn. Um, but that's a really cool word, and it means expressing Bacchic frenzy, as in Bacchus the god of wine. Um, that's spiffy. All right, that would have been a really nice find. Uh, ISO, yeah, that's a harder thing to find if you're not looking for mono. Uh, there's OI down here, OI over there, OI is over here, etc. IO. Oh, well, that's playable. Iwi. I was so excited a second ago because I hate the letter I, but it's a good letter for spelling longer words. So I need to become more comfortable with it. There's choir, as I was suggesting earlier, burning an I, but also uses up the R and the E, which we would like to keep in most circumstances, unless we think like opening the board is somehow going to help us um, get a bingo. I mean, if I'm going to play against such a strong player, I have to take my chances and play crazy stuff like this, but opening up uh, row 11 to a double-double is risky. Um, that risk is mitigated by my opponent's last play being raw. So they played two letters. Uh, they're also opening something over here, but this is not so much of a threat of an eight letter or seven letter word coming down as this would be of opening an E and an R and an I. Our opponent would very likely find an eight here. Um, so what did I play? I did play choir. And okay, I say they'd likely find a seven or an eight because I, if I remember right, that's exactly what happened here. Oh, and it had nothing to do with the fact that I'd opened a lane. There was already a lane open in this case because this is such a strong wreck. Um, so we have letters here sorted, both alphabetically but first um, sorted by tile value. So does that make sense? That the letters that we're most interested in playing always appear on the left. Um, unless there's some very strong synergy, or unless you're holding on to an X for some reason. Um, yeah, the, the ones we most want to play are going to appear on the left. And um, it's interesting how other consonants like LRT will appear on the right. Uh, what was the word? Lamater? Yeah. 
aren't there other ones like Tremail or something? What are our words here? Lamater, Maltier, Eremital, Marlite. Wait, Marlite? Um, you're saying there's something called Marmite, and there's separately a word called Marlite. All right, so it's marl with 25 to 75 clay, or percent clay plus chalk. Uh, what's marl? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, some sort of fertilizer. <laughs> uh, I'm just amused because the one way we looked this up gave us the noun. The second way we looked it up gave us the verb. And uh, you could see in both of those definitions that it has something to do with clay. Um, uh, goodness. Yeah, and calcareous means chalk. So, like, clay chalk. But uh, my curiosity was, what is the purpose of this uh, marlite? It's a fertilizer that's clay-y and chalky. Uh, so yeah, I've seen this before, actually. Just didn't know that there was a word for it. Uh, material. Oh! Oh, goodness, I've seen this played before. Um, is there any significance to this spelling of it? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Um... So this is the noun, not the adjective. Um, although I think, correct me if I'm wrong, define material. Yeah, it's also a noun, but it could also be uh, used as an adjective materially. But also you'll hear some people use the adjectival form uh, materially, but just leave off the L-Y and say that this was material to the case, or something. Um, uh, wait. Wait a second. Materially? Um, is that an adjective? Or is that an adverb? I can't dwell too hard on this. Uh, anyway. Um, a remital? Real time. Wow, that's considered valid. It doesn't require a hyphen. Militar, limiter, miltier, uh, airtime. Now, granted, these ones that don't use all the letters don't get the bonus, but still, it's cool to see what words are there. Okay, lean, uh, building Job again in lamb, and lean, a new word that I didn't know. Marl, uh, as in Marlite, and Meryl. Um, does that have something to do with the word merit? What is this? A counter used in a game of Merrells. Also Meryl, Meryl. Hmm. Okay. Define Merrells. Thank you. Um, okay, well, it's some kind of game. I can relate to that feeling. Um, see, a Lamater here is the best. Maltier, also very strong. Actually, these are equal. They're just in alphabetical order. This bot does not rank things by, um, a simulation. Uh, slightly less, yeah. So we did open hooks down here. This could have been a huge problem, but there was already a problem up there. So our opponent cuts down the possibilities by playing up here Lamater. Um, yeah. So, what the heck can I play here? How about Slamater? How great would it be if Slamater were valid? Um... So, edits, to do, yeah, 
the a letter I is useful for building building long words. Uh, storied would be a seven. I don't think storied accepts an S at the end. Um, deist. Uh, we don't quite have the letters for letters for diode. Um, Lameter actually opens up the L, the A, and the M if I know words that start with a vowel and one of those letters, or that start with one of those letters. But I don't think I do. Um, I don't know such words. Um, so raw, I believe, also accepts an S, although it doesn't make sense to me, but... No, I guess to become raw, something would raw. Uh, choirs is playable, but I just don't see a bingo. Outsides. That's a very difficult find here. Mons, yep. Kit, yep. Uh, going through the U, not my first thought, but very high scoring play. Um, Modesties. What? Modesties? Really? A dealer in stylish women's clothing. Modistes, I guess. French. I learn something new every day. Steroids. That would be an easier to identify word. Um, hmm. Stides. Oh, I'm sorry. I should not blitz through these. Toast. I blitzed through this one because I'm like, I. Some of these are more memorable. Modistes. Because they have a unique pronunciation. Um, toast. Like, it sounds a lot like a lot of other words, like hosed. So. I'm not sure that I'd remember this as well as I'd remember modistes. Then again, finding modistes is very difficult. Eights are hard. Outsides contains the word side. Side is something I should look for, and then I can have sides, and then try to find the out prefix or suffix. Um, so that's constructible. Do, or do, either way you want to say it. Odd. Stied. Sighted. Alright, so yeah, sighted and quired. It did not occur to me that choir accepts a D. Of course it does. Uh, what does it mean again? To sing in concert. Oh. Okay. Interesting. So I remember hearing this spell or seeing this spelling of the word choir and it was referenced in a musical context, a song Music's Empire. And I do not recall it was a twentieth twenty first century composer. Uh, I don't recall which. But yeah, it was a relatively modern composer produced Music's Empire. And um, they used this spelling, this old English spelling of the word choir. Uh, that just um, impressed me that old English could still be in use. Um, although that's kind of what the nature of that piece was. Uh, music was spelled M-U-Z-I-C-K. So it, it's got a different feeling to the piece. Um, just all the... Yeah, and then they had mosaic, I think, with a Q in it. There's just a lot of interesting spellings in that piece. Um, but yeah, choir I've seen before. I guess I did not expect that to choir would mean to sing. Because that seems confusing, that a choir would be the group that sings. But also choir would be the verb of singing in some sort of performance. In concert. Anyway, um, yeah, knowing that now, acquired odds, sad, de so 
all these things that put the D there. Sado. Wait, where's that? Oh, over here. Upo. What does Upo mean again? I know we've seen this before. Upon. Apo means upon very well. Uh, what else? Deutz. I'm not going to remember that. That's hard to remember. That's my point. I'm not saying I stubbornly refuse. I'm just saying it's hard. Um, so I played Emit, which is nowhere near any of those plays that allow me to use it, the D or the O. And after I played this, uh, how long did I take to play this? I spent 46 seconds and came up with this atrocious play that did have one merit of blocking the corner, more or less, but not really. It was a really poor way to block the corner. Uh, if I, my goal from the outset were to block it, perhaps better would be a word like tie. Uh, T-I-E from 3A, but um, of course that opens the other triple. But this here uh, really doesn't do a good job at all of blocking the corner. I'm just gambling that my opponent does not have a high scoring play, and that maybe I might next turn, but I don't see how. Um, yeah, they played acquired. I didn't even catch that during the game, but don't see it. Is this... I mean, our opponent is so strong. Indoors. De Niro's. Don't see her. <sighs> okay. What does this mean? <laughs> Unlucky. Gaelic. Oh, oh Donsier. Alright, it's not French. It's Gaelic. Um, indoors. I think it means to endorse. Dineros, endorse over here. Uh, ordines, like ordinals. Sordine. I don't recall sordine. Like, I've seen it before. Um, but what does it mean? A cone shaped mute for a trumpet. I've seen these before. Also, sordino, and sordine with a U. Spiffy. Learn something every day. Uh, yeah, our opponent played Donsier. Or Donsier. Um, what the heck did I play here? So I was down to one minute. And what I played maybe not so important is, um, what can I consider playing here? Uh, one thing that occurs to me here would just be, yo. Uh... Getting rid of the Y, taking the triple, 32 points. It puts me at the mercy of the bag. Um, is this playable? Yod? I don't know if Yod is playable, but Yon certainly is. Uh, Yo's might now. I don't know if Yo's is acceptable or not. Uh, so, this aspect here seems to be the candidate for where I'd want to play. Um, yeah, looking up here I, in the upper left corner, I don't see anything. I'm pretty sure there is no bingo, so... Wind. Wow, that is cool. This did not make my list of QXZJ plays, because it has none of those letters. But it does have a W and a Y. So that's a good word to know. Is this an old English spelling of wind? Oh! A narrow alley. Okay. Uh... Winds? So I'm making an effort on some of these words that have high-scoring tiles in them. Because the high-scoring tiles stand out. Um, a rune having the value of modern English W. Also win. Alright. Wins. 
Does this have a different? Oh, no, that's the plural of win. Yods. All right, so yod is valid. Yods is valid. Yawned, of course. Win. Um, downy. Huh. What does this mean in this context? The detergent. No, okay, now what is it? Covered in down. Downier, downiest, downily. And so we look up these words and their definitions because their inflected forms um, could be maybe more common than the word itself. So yeah, downier, downiest, down illy, and downy itself. Uh, covered in down, which would be like duck feathers. Um, yod, which I mentioned, I just didn't know. Donzi, what the hell? Um, well, we know dons is a word, so this is actually worth knowing as an extension. Um, what what could this mean? Unlucky. Wait. That sounds familiar. That sounds extremely familiar. I feel like I asked the definition of this word already today. Um, I'll have to check the video later. Oh, I played an invalid word, right? No, I played woe. Um, oh, wait. What was my play? See the scorecard. No, I think I played. I challenged it. And the, oh, okay, I did play well. Um, yeah, the Y is also important to play, and it helps me play my other consonants. So now that I'm arranging my tiles with high scoring tiles first, that should reinforce that I need to read all the tiles before making a play, or at least read the ones on the left. Uh, yes, I played this, and of course our opponent does a very strong play there. Um, so yeah, this scores 23 and clogs or closes the board again. Uh, so yeah, here vine occurred to me. Wait, no, I don't have a V. Pine occurred to me, but it's not playable because IL is not a word. Having only an I makes it difficult to score short words. This is why I should hold on to vowels other than I when the board is closed. I'll do well to recall that in the future. We have I-N-Y as a suffix, but yeah, Yeah, what's it going to be? Oh, spiny. No, does not fit very elegantly here. Um, I guess we saw Ron is a bird, so Spiny could fit here and just would not make the best play of uh, the Y. Um, are there other decent plays to consider? Uh, I'd like to use the Y. Now that we're not constrained for time, we could look at this. Um... During the game, we were constrained for time, and that's the excuse. But at this point, we're out of excuses. We can't take the corner because the eye does not fit here. Um, and I don't think Slammeter would be accepted. So... Uh, yeah. Our opponent's done very well at controlling which lanes are open and which aren't. So my best hope is to get a 7 or 8 straight through the eye here, which is definitely not happening. And that is definitely happening for our opponent, unless we prevent it. Um, so, uh, is Kip valid? We saw earlier that Kip was valid. If Kip is valid, let's look up Kip. Uh, yeah, to sleep. So yup here would play my two highest scoring tiles. It does not score very many points, however. Um, just getting in a place where I'm not in pain every single turn trying to play tiles, while also closing off the highest scoring lane on the board, 
before our opponent takes it. Um, Admittedly, they have like other planes like over here, the R, the E, and S on the end if they happen to get an S, although one, two, three, uh, it's unlikely they'll get an S. They're more likely to get the blank. But yeah, what are our high equity plays here? Yaps over here. Wait, what's wrong with yups over... It just doesn't score as much to play yups as it does yaps, but yups is a better defensive move. If it's playable. Pissy. I don't like this because I don't like the equity. Evidently, ND is a decent equity in itself. Um, Yid. Uh, yeah, it's, we're not considering this corner right now. It's not the right place to... Oh, Spry. Spry is decent because it... Um, prevents the opponent from bingoing again while we try to collect good letters and play off the Y and the P. And uh, yeah, here we're able to play three consonants. So that's very good. Pudsy. Wow. Well, that's impressive. Um, so pudgy is a word. What is pudsy? Pudgy, also pudsy. A plump person. Um, so yeah. Isn't that more or less the same definition as pudgy? Oh. <laughs> okay, there is a distinction. Pudsy um, would be a plump person. Pudgy would be a short and fat person. Um interesting uh those are different words words have meanings <sighs> in other news yeah on the site yeah they recognize that words have meanings and that's going to affect some future site policy dub is a word what does dub mean to undo Okay, cool. I should know my threes. Uh, I'll get better at it over time. Yups is valid, as I suspected. Upsy. Really? Upsy is valid. What does upsy mean here? A carousel. Alright. That's really funny. Yeah, there's spirey. Spy, spy, spry we saw over... where was it? Where is spry again? Spry is over here. So we have spry, spirey, spy, spy, siped. Um, to soak through, to seep, also siped. Huh. So seep can be spelled, or I guess, yes, spelled three different ways. Uh, you can spell it S-Y-P-E, S-I-P-E, and the way I'm familiar with spelling it, seep, S-E-E-P. But all three are accepted in uh, both dictionaries. Uh, yeah. Words have meanings, guys. Okay, which play did we make here? We found spry. I don't remember having found that, but I am, in retrospect, impressed. The only depressing part of this is, well, it's manifold. One, Ron or Roz, it, they're not going to get an S. Two, the I is open. Three, the L and a parallel play off the T are possible. Uh, really just depends what their letter of combination is. They don't have fainter... What did they play here? Anti-fat. Holy crap. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wait, no, that's the move list. Uh, yeah, okay, anti-fat is playable. Uh, 
in all these different ways. Uh, flatting. Anti-fat fate. All right, let's look up what anti-fat means. Designed to reduce fat. All right. It makes sense from, <laughs> not from a U.S. English perspective, but it's in both dictionaries. Um, fat, fat, tufa. Uh, what's tufa? Just out of curiosity, a rock made of made of fine volcanic detritus. Also, calctufa. Tof and tof. Wow. Okay, so that's the Italian way of spelling tof. Um, or, yeah, that's cool. There's a lot of... It's interesting to hear how words cross from country to country and language to language. Aft, raft, titan, yeah, whatever. I say whatever, finding four parallel plays is not an easy feat, but in this case it wasn't even meritorious, because anti-fat scores very well. Um, Alright. This is the make it or break it moment, and I did not make it. Um, so, one hook possibility is over here. Uh, another would be something crazy on the right side of the board. Um, if I have time to look and find all the parallel plays, assuming I know the word or words that I'm trying to build. Um, but yeah, this starts from the assumption that I even know what sevens can be constructed. Rather than using the analyzer outright on this one, I might anagram that set of seven letters, see if anything is found, and then attempt to find places to put it. But um, spend a minute or two trying to find something here. So acids. Um, I mean, I-N-E-S or I-D-E-S are the suffixes I'm looking at. So I'd be looking at like can ides or cadenes or something like that if i'm trying to build a seven uh, i would expect the c to be in the front or at the very end as in something i c or i c e or i c e s um yeah it's really difficult to identify which possible suffix could be used here um So, like, andices, not like indices, so it's probably not valid. I am super stumped. I don't think I'm going to find a 7 here. And the worst part of that is there's probably more than one. Oh, candies. Candies is the word. Alright, where could candies potentially even fit? Basically nowhere. Um, hmm. I mean, this would be one spot. C A N D I E. Nope. All right. Um, where else could we consider putting candies? The C really doesn't fit well with anything. So. Snadic, Ansadic, I don't know. What words other than candies could we consider trying to fit on the board? Encased. All right. Um, so it'd be I N C A S. Nope, does not fit there. Uh, here, encased. That would have been perfect. Um, so those are the plays. Um, 
I N C A S E. Nope. Um, candy C does not go parallel to any of these. Encased the C would not go parallel to any of these either. Um, so it looks like this is the this is the main place to put, or the only place to put it. Um, unless there's like an eight with L at the beginning. All right. Whoa. Holy f cyanid. Uh, okay. That is cool. Uh, that's the sort of word, if you play that, people will ask questions. If you're a beginner, like, how did you find this word? And what does it mean? A member of the family cyanidae of tropical and temperate perseoid fishes. Also cyanoid. Yeah, that is really cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, what does perseoid mean in this context? Of the perch family. A member of the perch family. Also perched or perching. Perched? Uh, I... Hmm. Okay, so perch is a family of fish. So... Uh, cyanid encased. Distance. Okay, there's... Um, yeah, in case I don't know the word encased. Distance is findable. How much time did I... Well, it doesn't matter now. I got in so much trouble here. Can't... Uh, if, I, if none of these other plays existed... Canid um, makes sense. Having to do with a canine. Acneed, uh, covered in acne. Caned, to cane something or someone. Acted, caned over here. Cade. So, yeah, I was so focused on trying to find a bingo here that I panicked and basically... Uh, the rest of the game played itself at this point. Um, I was just so distraught that I could not find distance and could not find encased. And that was like my one chance to try to come back into the game, and I was not ready. Candy itself um, is playable, but just that's not a bingo. It's still a reasonable play. But yeah, if I had known that I was not going to find the bingo then I would have been looking for acted, or caned, or acnead, or canid, or something like that. Um, I'm impressed that so many of these are... Well, I guess there's a double word score over here. There's a triple word score over there. But yeah, I was just so... Uh, in an emotional state of some sort during the game. Um, that I could not think about this. Um, and just fell apart. You know, that's really interesting to me, actually. Uh, have I had that kind of reaction during exams before? Like, throughout... Uh, huh. It's strange. Yeah, when I'm dealing with exams, like when I was doing tests, uh at high school or college. Um, I don't think nervous energy ever got the better of me. I don't think so. Somehow exams make a lot of people really nervous. Um, I think the one I was most nervous about was the ACT. But uh, I don't think that ever impaired my ability to find stuff during the test, even though exams were timed. Um, hmm. I wonder why now, why this, um, I struggle so poorly. 
I get the same sensation with, like, uh, when I'm playing Shogi, too, that um, if I'm not giving myself enough time, I just straight up panic. That is surprising to me. Actually, with chess, I've had that, too. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with board gaming at all. I think it's just having to do with um, uh, trying to exercise an unfamiliar skill and trying to do it in under pressure of a timer. I've also had... Uh, it's been stressful taking piano lessons at times um, because at each weekly uh, lesson you'd be expected to demonstrate things that you practiced throughout the week and there would always be some nervousness of oh what if I don't play this correctly um, so yeah I think it's just unfamiliarity that's driving nervousness at this point um, and practice will help with that. But yeah, I didn't realize there is definitely a strong pattern in my past two matches that playing three minute, uh, this is game number three, and already I'm quite rattled. And I guess the best I can do to mitigate that until I have enough experience to not have it rattle me so frequently. The best I can do is just be careful about spending my time wisely um, and accept the fact that since there is no Bioyomi time control, um, I just need to be very careful to exercise my time wisely and acknowledge and be okay with that completely fucking up my game. Um, I can't afford to play good moves. I can't afford to try to win games. I just have to spend my time wisely or I will get destroyed. This is a competitive scene here. This is not like the Shogi Weekly Teaching Ladder, where you are going to enjoy it and have fun and learn. And okay, yes, the clock, the Byoyomi will help ensure that the game does not run forever but um yeah here this is super competitive blitz scrabble it's designed to be torturous um i guess the one glimmer of hope there is that um i'm not the only person who uh gets stressed out and time pressure other players do this too. And I'm not just talking about Scrabble. I'm talking about, we're looking at like the 25th anniversary of Kasparov losing to Deep Blue. And I think the, the match setting itself that he committed to was too stressful for him. He did not expect such a challenge and uh, foolishly walked into an arrangement that uh, stressed him out and then after the match he said some unfortunate things too but yeah if the world champion in chess can be stressed out in time pressure or because of match circumstances maybe i can't feel so bad about myself um stressing out in three minute blitz when i'm not especially good at three minute blitz to begin with uh, I don't need to be a perfectionist at this time. I just need to get words played and accept that, like, playing hastily will ruin my winning chances, and that's fine. Uh, welcome. Yeah, woogles.io is, um, you've probably heard of Lee, uh, Lee Chess. You've heard of Lee Shogi. You might not have heard of Lee Drafts. Woogles.io is the online word gaming platform just like Lee Chess is. Uh, so yeah, that's what Woogles is. It is open source. It's terrific and wonderful. Um, I'm just bemoaning at this point that I've joined a tournament that's going to go for some number of weeks 
and uh, playing three minute blitz in this tournament against some extremely strong competition. And okay, that's exciting. I'm not even bemoaning any of that. It, what I'm bemoaning here is that um, back in the lobby page, there's not a way to play with the Bioyomi clock. So I need to add a Bioyomi game clock to this site to encourage beginners to join and not panic the way that I panic. Um, am I good at words? I'm getting better. So we've played two nine game rounds in this tournament and our first first round our first match went 0 and 9 and then our second match went 0 and 9 so am i good at words maybe i'm getting better uh <laughs> depends what you mean by good um among beginners i'm probably decent um i'm still working on mastering two and three letter words but it's interesting to see all these things that are possible. Um, yeah, Acton is cool. What in the world does Acton mean here? <laughs> um, yeah, so this site was just released at the end of last year, as best as I know. Um, and they're working on building up tournaments and inviting players. And I'm continually reminding them of things that, you know... Beginners would like the site to work better in some ways. Um, yeah, English is my native language. Here we're using the International English Dictionary, CSW, the Collins word list. I don't know what CSW means. Um, but yeah, Collins, I believe, is the maintainer of the Collins Dictionary. Um, and so it contains all kinds of words that are not in U.S. English. Um, and perhaps part of what inspired me to try this tournament is uh, I'd like to learn more of those international English words. I see other players using that book. I see, um, I've seen in the past, you look at YouTube, there's various uh, Scrabble tournaments and tournament coverage is in YouTube videos. Um, and you'll see that sometimes when people are using the U.S. dictionary, it's just they'll get a rack of bad letters and there's nothing they can do. And the announcer time and time again will remind uh, the spectators, oh, this is just a bad draw and they'll have to get around it somehow um and i've played scrabble a fair number of times against family members um so to me um seeing people play with this dictionary that, that just never seems to happen it seems like there are a lot more words a lot more opportunities to play things um so i find that fascinating Yeah, so actin here, a protein found in muscle tissue. Is this so? A protein of some sort. Why is it called actin? I wonder what the etymology of this is. Uh, the word bot, uh, wordsmith is what I'm calling it or naming it, uh, does not give etymology at this time. For a lot of words, but I am curious what actin came from, but I've heard it before. Anywho, uh, what I played in this tournament game was Tick, uh, which evidently is valid, so I'm doing better at remembering valid two and three letter words. Alright, uh, so we still have encased, we still have candies, but we have uh, building candies through a C with the other C is not going to work. Uh, I spent some time out of my remaining 12 seconds in this game to try to find a word that would use both C's and could not think of anything. Like, Cadenza does not use another C. There might be a word that accepts two C's, but encased is definitely the play here, as it was last turn. Um... 
there might be some word cadenzic or something over here um if oud is even valid okay what are we looking at uh oh right acidness i like acidity um in international english they would also accept acidness instead of just acidity cyanid as was their last turn uh cadences okay so cadenza no but cadence of course yeah can I, cadences and you could stick the e either way here um a dances what how oh, what what cadences all right uh what does cadences mean I mean, the odds of getting this ever again are unlikely, but what does it mean? Help. All right. It's an interesting way to say help. Um, Eden says descant. I know this word because it appears in sheet music. Um, and I've seen my fair share of sheet music. Uh, descant is like the... Female lead solo line in a choral piece? No. No. <sighs> I am terribly embarrassed to not recall the definition of descant. An accompaniment above and harmonizing with the main melody to comment on a theme, also discant. Um, yeah, okay, so it's not a melody in the top voice. It's a top voice of a piece that harmonizes with the main melody. Um, yeah. Oh, but it also has a, an alternate definition to comment on a theme. Also, discant. Uh... Huh. Didn't it? I would never would have guessed discant as a word. Alright, so that's embarrassing. Would have had to find emits and also think of using the blank as a T. The Yeah. It's a hard one to find. Uh cyanized. <laughs> Oceanids. I've seen this before. Uh Patients. What? Huh? What does this mean? Patients. What? A number to be multiplied by another number. Wow. I'll have to use that one uh, at some point. Echidnas. That's some sort of um, life-related thing. Nature-related thing. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, the spiny anteater. Uh, cyanides, codinas. I've seen this one before. This is a high probability bingo because it involves A, E, I, O, and an N and an S. So it's very likely for you to have, wait, A, E, I, O, N, S, and, and a D. And the only one that's a little odd about this is a C. Um... Codinas. It's like code points. No, I'm sorry. A narcotic alkaloid. Oh, codina. Uh, like codeine. All right, it would be a codina. I'm sure there's other bingos that aren't even listed here. There's just like all the top plays, danciest. All these are play all the tiles, and yeah. Any of these would have been excellent, but I had 12 seconds. That's my excuse. But even after the game here, 
so previously the bot had showed us encased, um, but figuring out words with a blank is difficult and a skill I will obtain over time, um, which is why I've got to become very strong at finding parallel plays in the meantime to get seven letter words out until I can find eights. Dice, all right. I don't have an obvious play here. Um, yeah, like agonize doesn't really work. C and G don't get along very well in this case. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a bingo. Um, A, G, O, N, no idea. We got nag. Could make S I N G the suffix, but then if S I N G is the suffix, then A N O have to be in the prefix. Lano sing, Alno sing, something sing, I don't know. I give up. Uh, Cranogs. Well, that's a fun word to know. If you get a chance to play Cranogs or. I can't even pronounce this. Conlangs? What the heck? An invented language. Nice. Okay, what is Cranogs? Gaelic. A lake dwelling in Scotland and Ireland, typically a tiny island artificially enlarged and fortified. Also Cranage. All right, so that's the other thing with the international dictionaries. Sometimes there's words to, that can be spelled with or without a trailing E, um, I guess particularly in Gaelic. So like the suffix NGS, I would normally not even consider, but so it's Crana, um, can accept an E optionally. You can omit the E and therefore this is something you need to look for. <laughs> Or just no. Songman. Alright. The other week against Hasty Bot, I played Swagman. Now we were playing um, using the Void Challenge rule, which meant I got as many chances as I want to play a valid word. And one of the words that to me looked valid was Swagman. And here we've got Songman. A person that sings a song, or participates in a song. Yang is in yin and yang. Loanings. Now, I'm curious how Yang... This clearly is not considering the board position when considering equity. So, the observation here is NOS blank is a very strong leave. Not quite as strong as NIS blank. And there is only one I remaining. And there's not a lot of places to play seven and eight letter words. So sticking the G in the corner even though I have N and a blank and perhaps could spell uh, something with the C, with the G, and all seven tiles would be a 9. Although there might be a 9 in some future turn that involves placing six tiles between here and one on top. That's not likely. And finding an 8 through the C um, is harder because the G's in the way. So like this is not wise, even though in general S-O-N blank is terrific as a leave. So yeah, you should prefer to play this bingo over Yang if you can find this bingo. Loanings. I guess amounts being loaned. Alright, then there's aid and gain and Naga. Naga's a word? What could Naga mean? Some kind of spirit, right? Oh, a snake. The cobra. Um, or a snake, especially the cobra. A divine snake in Hindu mythology. Alright, so I wasn't entirely wrong. Uh, in Hindu mythology. Alright, and then we have gabs and chins, which is delightful. What? How do you even pronounce this? There is a command to pronounce words, however, I don't have a way to interact with my bot to 
even if we were to exercise the command, we would not hear the pronunciation here. Um, define N-G-A-I-O. What does it mean? Mori. A New Zealand tree with white wood. A gaio. I guess this is the best I can think of. Just silent N gaio. Wow. Gain? What is this spelling of gain? What does this mean? Oh, to go. Gay we've seen to go from our three-letter word list. Gain is another form of the word gay. But they both mean to go in Scots. Um, Alright, and then we've got guy, or guy. Um, does this have similar meaning to gaio? What in the world is going on here? A clan or a tribe is used before the names of certain Maori tribes. So they have a word guy, and they have a word gaio, and they have very different meanings. Um, so, huh. Why would gaio mean a tree with white wood, and guy mean a clan or a tribe? How would this not be terribly confusing? Uh, at least to outsiders, people who don't speak the language every day. All right, so we had no time. We we're negative on the clock. We played cog. Fair enough. Um, what would we play here if we had time to find a word? So N Y. I'm sorry, we don't. There's nowhere to put N Y here, but S T is accepted. That's a T in emit, not a Y. Getting a bit tired here. Um, but yeah, S, any word starting with an S with two N's, that's going to be hard to ask, especially if there's a blank. Uh, E-T is also valid. Um, I-T, A-T, U-T U -T are all valid. But um, of all those... Uh, the I seems like the best candidate. So you're probably looking at A something I and then all the way down. But if you're using the blank as an I, it's going to be hard. Uh, I don't know that dice is a hook for anything. And even if it were, we've blocked other plays. Um, there might be a word ending in an A, but unlikely. Um... Okay, so what would be a reasonable play if we're not trying to play a 7 or an 8? Uh, over here, Hane? H-A-N-E? Uh, I don't know if that would be accepted. Hair would be accepted. No, it wouldn't. Hair would not be accepted because this is not accepted. Yeah. RA is not playable. Um, NA is playable. Is Hain valid? No. Um, yeah, there's nothing I can do to improve that. Uh, so yeah, playing in the corner is actually quite tricky here. Uh, so nah, NAH over here would be decent. Um, Parallel plays anywhere. This over here, Habs. Um, I believe Hab is accepted. Habs is accepted. Um, not found. Just kidding. All right, we need to work on our words. Um, nabs, but Nup. I don't know that Nup is accepted either. We've heard of prenup, but as in prenuptial, but yeah, nothing here. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I just... This is a good exercise. Our opponent made this very challenging for us. 
as they tend to do for everyone. So ha over here, double letter score, scoring JA as well is probably reasonable. Although there's 12 in the bag. Um, we don't want to rely on the bag to give us our remaining vowels, but yeah, HA scores a lot. Um, we're never coming back to win this game, but HA is still a reasonable play. Um, I don't see anywhere else to play anything. Uh, over here maybe? No. I don't see a good play here, starting with the Y. Um, uh, yeah, is DAL playable? It is. It's Hindi for a kind of Indian edible pea, also a doll with two A's, and other fun spellings involving an H or D H O L L, also kind of Indian edible pea. So, since D A L is playable, if we could come up with har or something that would fit here, that would score okay. But our best scoring play is what we noted earlier. Um. I wonder if playing here could be nice, too. Um, I don't think I have a word. I'm, no, I don't have a word here. Um, so, N-A-H, as noted here, would probably be best. R-A-H, probably fine, too. But N-A-H burns when I doubled N's. Yep. All right, we guessed correctly. We got one play right. Woo! H-I-N is playable. Contrary to my expectation. Uh, what does it mean? Hebrew unit of liquid measure. What would you even measure in him anyway? Yarn? Oh my goodness. We've seen this on a previous play. It didn't even occur to me here. By we, I mean the recommender here recommended it. Sira. What does Sira mean? A red wine grape. All right. What else? There's Ra, as I noted. Nane. N-A-N-E. What? What could this mean? N A N E. Oh, Scots for none. Okay. Rin. Why do I not remember Rin? To run. Okay. Roz. Han. Sharn, in over here, Ronnie, okay. Uh, the wife of a Raja, also Rane. Burn, Shan, Shannon emits, okay. If I knew the word Shan, yeah, this would be a reasonable play, um, depending on where it would fit on the board. Um, in criminal slang, a base or a counterfeit coin, also shand. Uh, unfortunately, I just do not know that word because I have not been participating in counterfeit currency. Um, but now we know. It's a lot of cool words. Um, my point is just to find, like, there are a lot of good plays here. I panicked. I played Naz, which got challenged off because it's not acceptable. And, yeah, at this point, I'm just so upset with what preceded that I'm not going to analyze the rest of this game. That was beautiful, shattering. Wait. Wow. 
So that was his out bingo. No, he didn't go out. Kula was my play. Shattering is still a very strong play. Um, what did our opponent play? Oh, they played A, uh -uh, and they're stuck with an E at this point. Um, my play was Vino, which is invalid. All right, let's say we're stuck with this. Is there any way I can play my V here? Having thoroughly screwed myself, where would I play the V? If I had any time whatsoever to think of a valid placement, as I have negative 55 seconds on my clock and 5 seconds to play anything, I played an invalid word. Um, it's very unlikely I was going to find anything but Vin here, right? Vin might be playable, maybe. Um, really, that's probably the only place I could find to play the V. I ask not because of this game, but, like, theoretically, someday we might have to play an end game in Scrabble and attempt to play high-scoring moves in order to decide the outcome of a game. So the skill of being able to find the best out move helps. Um... But yeah, I don't see any V plays. So what else could we look for? The N and T. Uh, I don't see... I think F, maybe F-E-T, but normally it takes another E. Uh, Ny and Y here is good. Um, uh, Sty would be decent, given that the opponent's going to go out next turn. Uh, actually, the S... Like, I'm going to play something, but put the S here. Um, so tabs here, if it's valid. Or nabs and nup. I don't know. That's why we need to practice. Um, but uh, define top. Oh, to copulate within U. Wow. Really? Okay. Jeez. Never knew that. Probably never wanted to know that. Except in this case, it would allow me to play tabs. And tabs is a decent play here. Probably the highest scoring play I have available. <sighs> yeah, so it's blocks. I can't play an S there. But yeah, tabs here would have been good. Yes, we found the best play. Chins. Yeah, even... Oh, Absta. Alright, yeah, some S plays in the center of the board are high playing. It's not as if the opponent could take them anyway. Nth over here would require finding tie. Uh, Bents. F-E-N-T-S. Watts. So none of these plays involve use of the V. Because there's just not enough time to play all the high-scoring plays and get the V played. Indices. Okay, that's beautiful and sad. It doesn't score that well. That's pretty funny. Yeah, so lesson learned here, especially in time trouble. Uh, focus on finding a good play. Don't worry about finding the best play. This isn't chess. It is not necessary to find the best play every single play. And it's counterproductive. In chess, it's also counterproductive, but you can at least think and trick yourself into believing that you've played the best play. Um, in uh, this crisscross words game, it's unlikely. You can't really fool yourself the same way. Alright, so yeah. We played Vino, and they challenged it as they should, and they played X, and we said, yep, that's valid. So, another extraordinary performance by Conrad Bassett Bouchard. Um, that was game three of nine. We still have six games left to review. Um, 
We also have, uh, I guess, Sunday, uh, the next round, uh, my next game coming up. Uh, so I do need to study word lists again. Uh, but yeah, I think we're learning something from every one of these game studies. And so um, that's a good thing. Even if, gosh, this is embarrassing. and uh, We'll have to study quite a few games to improve a lot. But playing and studying word lists will help. So we'll see how things go. Um, yeah, I think displaying high scoring tiles first on the rack will help me tremendously um but i need a lot more help than that so we'll see how the next round goes thanks for watching have a good night